Tonight, Screen Paranormal Research is here in Hanover, Pennsylvania. We're here to help this client out behind me here, and we're gonna try and come up with some answers for them that they've been trying to look for for the longest time. Uh, we brought a medium out with us, David Allen Brown, so uh, hang tight and let's see what happens. So Megan, tell us a little bit about what we might encounter tonight here at this residential investigation. We were contacted by a woman named Deanna. Um, she's asking for some help. She's got a lot of activity going on in our home and she wants us to come out and see if we can maybe give her some answers. She's got some basic activity like footsteps, um, some shadowy apparitions, uh, and then she's got other things like doors opening and closing by themselves, objects being lifted up and thrown across the room, uh, some really unexplainable photo anomalies, um, foul odors that have no source. She has a lot of feelings of like strong dread and just unease in the home and it's causing her to lose sleep. And she has also a case of screaming coming from inside the walls. Screaming coming from the walls? All right. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, what else can you tell us about this investigation? The home is actually built on limestone, which we know is a good conductor of activity. Uh, it's actually home to the uh, Susquehannock Indians. They were a very aggressive tribe that were extinguished in 1763 by a combination of war, smallpox, and lynch mob massacres because they were cannibalistic. Delicious. So it's possible that we could be encountering some negative activity while we're there, so we really need to be on our guard tonight. Well, that's good to know because what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna bring a medium with us just to be on the safe side. Hey David, how's it going Chris? Good, good. Thanks for coming out and helping us with this case tonight. Um, this is uh, very important to us to bring you out for this because of the fact that uh, uh, we're not 100% sure what we're going to encounter here mm -hmm. tonight and um, what we wanted to do was be on the safe side. Do you have any other questions for us at this point in time or? No, just don't tell me much. Don't tell me anything. No, I'll All right. do what I do. That's the way we like it as well. Cool. <laughs> Alright, so then let's get going. Cool. So David, you've had a chance to walk through this house, uh, get some feelings on what's going on around here. I don't want to know too much, similar to what you said earlier. I don't want to get too much information and get preconceived ideas of what's really, you know, names or anything like that. But if you could tell me a little bit more about, like, you know, um, the feeling and stuff like that, you know, that you're getting here, what would be your first impression with this location? Um, well, it's broken into different areas, kind of. Um, the basement. There was a kid, for sure. Um, Run around, play a little bit. 
you know, I can get into more depth later on, but mm -hmm. that um, upstairs makes no sense. It's masked. There's something else behind the scenes. It's not just mm -hmm. the way it looks. It's different. Is there any potential danger here for the team tonight investigating, or do you think we're pretty much safe? Uh, pretty safe, as long as you give the respect it's due. Okay. If you start disrespecting or mm -hmm. pushing where they don't want you to, mm -hmm. you know, then, then then there could be some issues, I guess. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. So um, ever since we got here at this location, one of the things that's been kind of a, a little unsettling is the fact that uh, people have been uh, feeling nauseated, headaches. Uh, my first impression is the fact that it may be due to high EMF. Um, however, uh, you know, talking to Steven here, I think that um, one of the things that's kind of weird is that we really haven't gotten much. So yeah. What did you get on a base reading? I don't even know. I did a base reading of the entire house and I got zero throughout, you know, except for like little point fives, electrical appliances, things like that. Mm -hmm. It was zero throughout the entire house. Right. We did get a 4.5. Except for the living room. Right, the living uh, room. Right yeah. by uh, her recliner, it's up to a five, mm -hmm. solid five, mm -hmm. and where he usually sits, it's a solid two. So, I mean, given that area, those are the only EMF you know, base readings that showed up. They weren't zero, zero. Basically. But the weirdest part I think about this is, which is really throwing me off, is the fact that a lot of people who have actually been in the kitchen area, right, that are experiencing this euphoria, nauseated feeling, I mean, what'd you get in here? I got, zero. I got zero, zero, two. Zero. So, yeah, so why is it that there's no EMF fields in here, there's nothing to make you feel euphoric, you know, why is it like that here? It doesn't make sense to me, you know? The only thing I could possibly think of are those tacos that they got on Broad Street in Philly. That might. Aside from that, I don't see it. Well, since we're nowhere near Philadelphia. <laughs> don't, don't talk about much Broad Street tacos. <laughs> Just saying, like, you know, you there has to be some handle. other sort of explanation, which we don't have at this point in time. Not everybody can handle Screen Paranormal Research Investigates. Uh, in the house here, we just shut the power off the breaker. So, uh, you know, we're gonna see what we come up with is this. Still feeling a little weird in this place. I don't know. Let's go on. So David, you get any kind of sense down here at all? Anything where we should be? Should we sit, grab a seat and just, you know, start communication? Yeah, do that. All right, I'm gonna start my EVP recorder in a second. What I'm gonna do is use this as a motion sensor light. Okay. I'm gonna drop this on the staircase. The motion sensor just went off. We're not in the path of the motion sensor. It should not go off while it's on the staircase. There you go. At all. Well, we started. Because we didn't move at all. Did you just catch that on film? Mm. Uh, I saw it go. I don't know if I caught it. Oh, they'll do it again. That's for damn sure. Let it. Let. Don't move. Just don't move a second. Starting recording. Residential. Hanover, Pennsylvania. It is now about 11:30, 11:40 at night. What I want to do is just start by saying, my name is Chris. This here is David. You pull it together, and you come over to me, and you yell it in my ear as loud as you can. Tell me what your name is. I can hear you. Just have to yell it. Again, what is your name? Attic bedroom. Recording. 
So Stephen and I are upstairs, we're in the attic. Um, reports up here are just very uneasy feelings. Um, in the bathroom, there's uh, reports of figures moving back and forth, uh, shadowy apparitions, uh, footsteps. Right now I'm getting a base reading of zero. We just went lights out, there's no power up here. Okay, I was getting a, a reading of 0.5 on the bed, but since they killed the power, I'm getting zeros. Okay, we do have a slight reading at the foot of the bed. Got a point 0.1. I smelled it. Flash. Okay. Mm. Sorry. To be frank, it smelled like poop. They get strong odors of fecal matter and urine that have no source. They've had people come and check like the sewer lines and there's no it was more like that. It was more like a sewer than a, uh, it's like something stagnant, almost. But it was... I didn't mention that to you earlier, did I? It was like one second, and then it was gone. This device here at the edge of the table, right here, right where my hand is pointing, right here, this will let me know that you're here. If you want to talk to us, step in front of that light. Are you a child? If you are, it's okay. You can come talk to us. Did you just hear that? Mm hmm You don't have to be scared. You can come and talk to us. So you know, Chris, where they're at. You keep looking. They're off on the left. Yeah, you know. Use your, use your psychic ability. But it, down here it gets weird. There's like a, a woman kind of feeling. There's a, a guy. There's a kid. The kid, the kid gets me a little bit, I get a little weird about it because I hear a lot of laughing, um, a whole lot of laughing. Uh, and it's like a, uh, <laughs> it's almost like a villain kind of laugh. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not play, like, like playful kind of. Yeah, but it's, it's like yeah. a, uh, it's not like a true child's laugh. You know, and it's kind of like, I'm going to make it sound like it, but it really isn't. And that's when I'm kind of like, this is weird. And it comes from some woman something to some sort of woman down here and it makes things weird she likes to pretend that she's not she likes to pretend things that she that really don't exist let me say it real quick which this, one this thing the k the k2 yeah sure yeah. Let's here. Okay. want to put her on that shelf there Feeling like a cold draft on my right. Yeah, I agree. Mm hmm. I agree. Um, my whole. And there's, my, an, there's no chills. wind down here? No, I'm all chills. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, right here I'm where I'm chills. standing. Yep. Yeah, that's that's where I started feeling dizzy. I started swaying over here a little bit, and I felt it kind of go around this way. Um, Dude, there's like zero. Look at this. Just get this on film real quick. We're all feeling kind of weird and like nauseated and dizzy and all this like mm -hmm. weird feeling. And this is what's weird. This is zero, zero. There's no EMF down here, and usually when we have EMF, high EMF, you might feel a little euphoric, and I'm feeling a cold right on my back, dude. Like right on my back. And there's no breeze down here. Why do I 
feel like this. This is so bizarre. All right, let's roll. Can you tell us your name? Count of three, please scream your name. So I want to. I want to know who's here. One, two, three. I heard your name is Timothy. Is that your name? If that's your name, I have this device here with the red light. All you need to do is come close to it. It'll let me know that you're here. If that's your name, can you just walk towards it? Stand in front of it for me, please. It's not gonna hurt you. It's just the light. Did you hear that? I did. Like a heavy breath behind you? Or a screw thing like that? Stop it. Everything needs to listen to that. Let's mark the time and that's really. Deanna says she sees someone walking back and forth in the bathroom. Is that you? Voice in time check. It's a lot of movement. Let's see if maybe David will get something up here. And recording, Attic. Right, let's try the scent. Let's grab our stuff. Head down the stairs. I keep hearing the name like Carrie or something over and over. I don't know why, but I've heard it a lot of times. You said you heard Karen, but you yeah. also said you heard something named Amanda. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, just ever since you've been asking, that's what I've been hearing. So I'll just say it and whatever. You okay. know. So Karen. Okay. Yeah. There's something to that effect. The names are kind of weird, but something to that effect. So. Hmm. Yeah, something like that. That's cool. So. Karen's a really pretty name. Um. Oh, I wanted to ask. Sorry, don't, don't cut you off. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask why she was making me feel like I wanted to throw up. Um, just a few minutes ago. You know, I'm sitting mm -hmm. here and I'm like, I feel like I gotta throw up, and I know it was associated with her. Mm -hmm. and I don't know what it was, but you know, maybe she can talk in to the little red light over there. Tell it, you know, tell you whatever it is. You know, why, why, why should the stomach illnesses and stuff like that? That's all. Why she makes people feel that way here. Is there a reason for that, Karen? Do you know why people feel sick in this house? This is the third time I've heard someone say that daddy's upstairs, and if you get daddy mad, then he doesn't like it. You know, if you get him mad, he doesn't like it, obviously. But it's like the third time I've heard it now, so.
So what ended up happening was Gary's battery drained completely on the camera. Uh, we lost a lot of footage when uh, that happened. Uh, he said he was about 50 minutes worth of uh, battery life, right? Something about that, yeah. Well, I was halfway through the big battery, so. Halfway through the big battery, so that must have been even more than 50 probably, minutes. Probably, actually, probably a lot more. Yeah, probably more like a, probably 150 minutes or something at least. If we just get a battery to review what the hell is still on here. I'm not sure exactly when I uh, switched it. Yeah, whatever you were recording at the time, if you didn't stop and start it, all that footage you were recording up to that point is lost. Yeah. Oh my god. What, what the hell was that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you just hear that? Yeah, it sounded like it came from this desk. What the hell was that? What the hell was that? Dude. I don't know, that kind of startled me. Dude, that was totally unreal. We were, what the? It seems like when we heard that noise up here when we were getting ready to test the air ducts, that it was like right in this vicinity. Whatever it was made a loud crash. We have it on audio, right? Yeah, I mean, it it's, I, I heard crash. it through my headphones and everything. It was. Something had rumbled. Something had okay. moved. All right, we're gonna have to when we review it. Um, we'll have to see if we can figure out what it is, but uh, otherwise it could be unexplained. I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. All right, let's go back down to meet the team. This place is weird. We got light. So Ricky, um, you experienced something upstairs with me. We heard a loud bang happening upstairs. Tell me a little bit more about what you experienced that night. Yeah, I mean. I've been with you guys for a little while now, and uh, you know we've gone through several investigations, and nothing made me jump out of my skin like this one did. I mean, we—I remember looking around on the ground because it sounded like something just straight up fell onto the ground from a desk or a table or something like that. Right. And right. there was absolutely nothing. There was there wasn't anything on the ground. I don't know what it was, which is the problem. <laughs> I was, I was very, uh, I, w I was frightened. Uh, it made me jump out of my skin. It really did, and I didn't know what to do. I mean, I don't know what it was. So Gary, you were in the basement with the second team that night in Hanover, Pennsylvania, and uh, supposedly your battery died halfway through the investigation. What happened? Yeah, I was with the second team. Um, we were in the Hanover house. Um, mm -hmm. We've been filming down in the basement probably something about an hour and a half. Um, I recall recently I'd switched my two hour battery to a 10 hour battery and that all that battery life was on the, uh, the basement chute. Um, we were filming, everything was going fine, doing great. And then just like that, uh, battery died. Camera black, there was, there was nothing. It was, it was gone. Footage was gone. I mean, I don't know what happened. Okay, listen, um, so Megan just pretty much read over David Allen Brown's letter here. Uh, you want to fill us in a little bit more about what you just read? Because you look a little weird. A lot of what he wrote down um, matches up with what I was speaking with the client with before the investigation. David went into the investigation completely blind. He knew none of the backstory I know. of our conversation with the clients at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the things he's picking up on were exact wordings of what she was saying. Uh, he's describing a woman that was has been scratched, um, and a pic photos of the scratches. Um, our client sent us pictures of those scratches. I remember that. Um, yeah. I have them all in the files. Um, wow. Okay. He says there's a little girl that she wants help. Um, she says that he said that he was there with her, and he got really he said big time chills with her there. Um, 
people in the house get headaches. That was another claim that Tiana was saying. People feel really uneasy. They yeah, we felt the same way when we were there investigating, um, right? Okay. He was picking up on something in the shower. Deanna explained that there are figures that she sees that passes back and forth between her shower. And we caught a light anomaly coming through the bathroom upstairs. Um, picking up on a man downstairs. Um, dirt floors, there's been activity in the basement uh, with the wooden stairs. He's describing here the wooden stairs that led down to the basement. We had the motion sensor go off in the basement as well. He just wants to be left alone. Deanna does feel very uncomfortable down there. She doesn't. She feels that whatever's down there is, uh, doesn't want to be approached. Um, we didn't get much conversation. Um, and then what he has underlined here, it's the only thing he has underlined this strongly. Um, it says dark forces. Um, the wording that he uses is shit moves and they messed with stuff. So he definitely feels like something is going on there that shouldn't be going on. Okay, you know what? Everything that he pretty much wrote in this letter is exactly what we experienced while we were there. But with everything that we experienced that night, it's all written down on this letter that was sealed in this envelope that we did not even open until tonight. Until after the investigation. Speaking of even That's freaking incredible. Personally, I really, I, I, I have no words for this. I have absolutely no words for this at this point. He drew the scratches. And he drew the three scratches. That the client had on her body.